guys and welcome back to my channel. Today you can see I'm working on a larger canvas. This one is a 16 by 20. I primed it once. I just want to prepare the canvas first with one coat of acrylic gesso. This is a lower grade canvas um, and so I really really need this to make sure that my colors, my paints stand out and hold up over time. So I made sure it's all dry and I'm going to go over the colors that we're going to use here quickly. I've got yellow ochre, turquoise, or bright aqua green, and I've also got some light ultramarine blue. Before we use those colors, I'm gonna take a little bit of black and white and paint a light gray background. It's gonna be a little tonal, so some areas I'm going to do a little bit darker for shadowing for my wave, and then I'm gonna do some lighter areas for my highlights and where I want my green to really glow and show up on the curl of the wave. So to begin the background, I've got this large blending brush. This is a number 30, I believe. There's paint covering up the number, but it's just any large brush that you want to use just to get the coverage and completely cover the whole canvas. So I'm going to get my brush just a little bit wet and I'm going to take my white first. I've got two piles of white here. This one is going to get dirty with the black. So I don't want to go back to that and get my green in there or my yellow ochre in there. So I've got this clean white uh, little area here for um, all that turquoise I'm going to be using later on and for the highlights on my wave. So I'll just take each color like this. And I know that I want to have a gray background. It's going to look really moody and semi uh, stormy and dramatic like that and then I want to have a dark area for the base of my wave so I think I'll add that right about here take just a little bit of water to help blend that out then I'm going to take white I'm going to start coming up higher and this is where it's going to get lighter inside my wave so I'm going to increase the white. Instead of leaving just the white canvas exposed for my brightest part of my wave, I want to have it gradiate slowly and have those mid-tones in there for some shadows that gradually get lighter. And then down here I'm going to make this lighter more white and then up top for the sky we'll come in with a lighter gray as well but I want it to be darker than the lightest part of my wave. So I'm just going to work upwards, side to side, working my paint out of the brush. I'm going to take more white with some black and create a nice dark gray color. Take a little bit more white. Just want this area to be lighter than the sky and of course lighter than the rest. Okay, I'm gonna completely dry this off and then I'm gonna come in with the next layers. See, this is all dried off. Now I'm going to start coming in with my light ultramarine blue. So I'm going to be adding, I'm going to use the same brush because 
I'm working on a large canvas. So remember to choose your brushes accordingly to the size of canvas and painting you're working on. I'm gonna add some cool shadows in here by beginning to use a little bit of this light ultramarine blue. And this is gonna look really gorgeous with that turquoise that we're gonna be adding a little bit later on. So I'm gonna add a little bit very lightly over part of the sky. I mainly want it to be a gray background, but if we just have a little hint of this blue in here, sometimes less is more, and it can really create a lot more interest in a painting. Okay, I'll just load up my brush a little bit more. Now over this part of the wave here, where it's gonna be really dark, this will still dry dark after. It's always lighter when you first apply it, but as it dries, and because I've got a little bit of water in my brush. And then I'm gonna start coming up like this a little bit. See that kind of a scoop. And a little bit over this light area here. does this blue look really pretty as a shadow color for this gray underpainting um, and for the wave and the water itself, but it's also going to create a different tone of turquoise and blue once I apply the green turquoise over top. So you guys will see in just a minute how that's gonna look. I'm gonna come in with my yellow ochre now. And because the wave is going to come up here and then kind of flatten out and pull. We're going to see, it's going to be very shallow here and we're going to see a little bit of that sand. And so that's why I want to use this. You can use any color that you want for your sand, but I chose yellow ochre because with the turquoise and the white later on, it's going to create a nice shallow water color as well, like a lighter turquoise yellow color. So I'm just going to start Adding it down here, a little bit in here. This way we get a bunch of different mid tones and hues going on, making your landscape and your water look a lot more realistic. So see how I'm not completely covering it up solid. I'm leaving little bits of the underpainting, all those other colors, the gray and that light blue showing. Now if we want to make sort of an indication of the horizon and maybe this there was a storm and it's clearing up now, I can just take a little bit of yellow ochre and tint my white with it. And then right in here. I'll just have a little line like that. So you could pull some sun rays in here if you wanted and create a little bit more atmosphere just by turning your handle up like this and creating those little fun scoops for that cloud separation. So it's a quick little wiggle. Really subtle and soft. 
And I'm gonna do the same sort of technique down below here, same colors. I'm wiggling my brush like this so that I get that shape back. And down here, so the width of this brush on the end is pretty perfect for the little gentle waves and movement we want, creating these little scoops. So it's the same technique as the clouds up top. So see how quickly I did that? So you're gonna want a number 30 brush for this size canvas like I'm using here. Possibly smaller, possibly larger, depending on how much of the scallop you wanna create down here. It really is like a scalloped sort of an edge to these little foamy bits. I'm going to switch over to a smaller filbert. Actually, this one's a number 30. Sorry, guys. This one is my number 50. So I'll make sure that I have uh, all of the sizes, colors, and brushes we're using down below in the description of this video. Just gonna get my brush a little bit wet. And I'm gonna start with turquoise and some white. A nice, bright, beautiful, glowing, minty color. Okay, and right in here. Where it's gonna be that bright light shining through there. And I'm gonna take more turquoise and we'll come right across the top. I'm just gonna get the white out of my brush. some foam up here so I'm not really too concerned with that looking perfect and then down here definitely want to pull over some of that blue and bring it down here layering over that yellow ochre so you can see what I mean how it looks a lot more realistic because you get all those different tones going on in there now here I'm gonna have this coming down I'm gonna have this coming down And curling, curving over and have that wave curl. So I'm going to get both white and turquoise, wiggle my brush to get that shape back. Pull, curl over. And then across. I'm going to take my brush, a bit of the yellow ochre, turquoise, a little bit more there, a bit more white. Do my little scallops again. Now I'm going to take one of my even tail rake brushes. I'm going to get it wet, take some white, really get it loaded up on the end there, and we'll be able to pull and curl over. You're going to need a lot of patience with this brush, and you're going to have to go back after every stroke 
and reload your brush because there's hardly any bristles there so it runs out of paint really fast. And this is also a really cool brush to do the little details in the water, all those squiggly lines. Just wiggling and creating all the little bits of foam. soften. I'm going to add some more turquoise right in here. Bring it up a little bit higher. And add a little bit more of that white. Take some white little bit of blue for some shadow first. Start tapping. and spray. So see how I'm turning my brush around? I want to stay away from that half moon shape everywhere. And you could use a, a round little stipple or mop brush as well. in here. And then we can start to add these half moon So you see how I go from the center straight down and then it starts to turn and curve this way. And then in here it starts to turn and curve this way. So we've got this really nice blue here. I'm going to add just a little bit more. I'm going to Add my brush to make it a little bit poofy so I can use it more as a stipple brush. So here this is going to stand out more against the background. And then what we're going to do guys is come in with a nice yellow ochre and white highlight and get back into that color back in the distance where the sun will be kind of coming through here and highlighting on everything. I'm gonna 
find a little bit of a shadow underneath some of these little scallops of foam. A little bit like that. I think I'll add a little bit of more of the blue in here. And then see, I can use this brush and pull up in the opposite direction. I'm gonna come back in with my little rake brush here. A little bit of turquoise. I think this just kind of a little bit blurry there on the side. Take some of my turquoise now. And just do this very lightly. Now I'm going to take a bit of my blue and my turquoise. Same rake brush. I can just use that under here and make this a little bit bumpy and wiggly. This is just for the shadow, a bit more of a shadow here underneath. start creating some more little wiggles Maybe a little more generous with our turquoise there I'm going to switch over to one of my, actually I'm going to choose one of my older ones. It's a little bit rougher and has separated a little bit more over time. A round mop brush here. I'm not going to get it wet. I'm just going to, I want it to be separated more so that I get spaces in between. Take a little bit of yellow ochre. So I'm tapping to load so it stays separate like that. And then I'm gonna add some highlights. And I'm gonna turn my brush different ways as I'm doing this. So I'm lifting and then tapping again. I'm not twisting, otherwise you're gonna get a different effect. It's a little bit more white. You can soften with your finger in some areas to get more of a, a spray effect coming up from the water. We don't know what's going on on this side. There could be a big rock that it's just splashed up against, so you're getting all that. I just want to use this part, so I'm just going to fill on the top here, leaving that blue underneath. Here. 
I'm going to go back to my right brush. Get that yellow ochre on there. Get that nice bright yellow. Mix some water with it. Use just the corner of my brush, the end. Take that spray. The movement. Without washing my brush, I'm just going to go into my blue again. And take down a little bit of this bright yellow. My highlight is just a little bit too bright for my liking, right there. I want it to be more of a light blue rather than a light yellow here. I just want a subtle touch of the yellow there, but mostly back here because this is where the light is coming from. It's going to hit and see just this top of the wave and partially kind of through. So we'll just have light. A little bit of those warm highlights here but mainly it's going to be the light blue highlight so i'm going to take my really small mop brush this is an older one so it's pretty rough on the end and that's what i want take a little bit of white with my blue and start tapping in little sections, kind of like how you would paint foliage on a tree. I'm leaving underneath dark and adding this highlight is what really, really helps to add that shadow there or to make that shadow stand out more. So it's making this wave look more 3D. And then in front here, I'm going to have that bit of blue. Let me just take some more of that blue. More than more blue than white right here, guys. And then back to the white. And as it comes down here, you can start to smooth out a little bit. Got a little bit more here. scumble out the leftover white on my brush and create a soft mist right above and 
and a little bit below here. Just slightly scumbling off. Most of this paint is dry now, but I can kind of work and gently scumble, just gently scrubbing off a little bit of that paint to get some of that mist going to make this look more natural. Tap in to that light, light yellow ochre again. Scumble out the rest. Barely anything in my brush, just a little bit. I'm going to take some of my turquoise. Yeah, I can just flatten my little mop brush now. bit here. The next thing I'm going to do is switch over to a liner brush and this is Princeton. It's a number one Princeton. These are really nice. I got these a few months ago and they're holding up quite well. Liner brushes are one of the brushes that tend to have to, they wear out the quickest. You have to purchase them more often than any other brush. So I'm going to come right in here. And I'm going to just start these little veins, veiny looking little bits of foam. I need a lot of water. Wiggle, wiggle, pull, wiggle, wiggle, pull, and kind of almost like little trees that curve this way with some little branches on them. You could think of it like that, if it's easier. Sometimes it's what we think that we're painting is what really stresses us out, right? So if you can change your mindset and be like, I'm just painting little tree trunks in here, little branches. It can help sort of take that fear away. Got a little bit of yellow ochre with my white. See how my brush handle is turned up? It's a little bit harder, right? To have that control. I mean, you could do it. I guess it all depends on your preference. to be really subtle. So before that paint can dry, because it's going to dry really fast, I take my finger and soften. Take a little bit of turquoise with that. Let's get a little bit of blue and white going on here, get quite a bit, get nice and thick. And add some of this, because this is going to give it a real glowing look. So you guys can see what an impact it makes to work on a gray background. I talked about this in my last video too, my last tropical video. I'll leave a link for that if you haven't seen it. And the gray background 
is just a really nice tone to, to prep your canvas with or underpaint your canvas with, I should say. I prepped it with my gesso. It shows off all the other colors and it really makes them pop out. Looks great with pastel colors. So you could easily make the background a sunset if you want. And I show you that step by step in my last tropical tutorial. I'm just taking a little bit extra white with my blue here. To create a little bit more movement. And then a little wiggle, tap and dab, just to change up the texture a little bit here and the foam and the splash. So you can make it as uh, rough, you can make the water as rough looking as you want just by adding more of this foam and little squiggles like this. You could even add a rock in here. I think I've got another, I've got a few wave videos. can see as the paint dries and sets into the canvas it's a little bit darker one to two shades darker so it's quite normal to have to come back a few times for your highlights I'm just gonna add a little bit of water on my brush and try to do this with more paint and less water just white this time and I'm using this brush again because I am able to safely add this highlight without covering up too much of the other colors that I've got underneath because of all the spaces this has it's the safest brush Turquoise right there. I'm just using the edge of my brush like this. Curve, curve, curve. A little bit more of that glow going on. And then back to my turquoise. Bring this down a little bit. Add a little bit more of a glow.
I'm going to call this one all done, guys. I hope that you learned a lot today and you got inspired to paint one yourself. Be sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, tap that bell, and then you won't miss any of my videos. You'll get notified every time I post a new one. I'll leave a link for my private face group below in the description of this video where you can request to join and share all your versions from my tutorials there. I'm looking forward to seeing them, guys, so I want to wish you happy painting, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!